Okay, it is two o'clock. Thank you everybody for attending today. We're gonna to get started with a few housekeeping items before we roll things over to our chefs here. Again, this is our session on Up Your Game, sponsored by Cisco, hosted by the Wisconsin Restaurant Association. This is the first of the new Foodie Virtual Hub series sponsored by Cisco. These trainings will occur the second Monday of the month, March through June. A couple of housekeeping items before I turn things over to our presenters. Feel free to submit questions using the chat feature found at the bottom of your screen. We'll open up for Q&A when the session is complete. The webinar will be recorded and sent to you later this week. If you would, please answer the quick feedback questions at the end of the session. It would be greatly appreciated. I will now introduce our presenters leading our session today. We have with us Chef Josh Quinn, culinary specialist of Cisco Baraboo. With over 18 years of culinary experience, Chef Josh has worked throughout the US taking all roles in various types of kitchen operations, including executive chef. His passion for culinary arts is evident in his daily interactions with restaurant owners, managers, and chefs throughout the Western side of the state. I'd also like to introduce Chef Ryan Nolan, culinary specialist of Cisco Eastern Wisconsin. Over 25 years of restaurant experience, Chef Ryan has also assumed various roles in the industry, including owner, operator, and executive chef. His career has encompassed the hotel, fine dining, bar and grill, farm to table, and catering operations in the industry. As a Culinary Institute of America alumni, he enjoys taking the knowledge he's learned over the span of his career to help others in the industry and anything from operations to recipe development. Over the past two years, Chef Ryan has worked directly with various restaurants in the eastern side of Wisconsin. Again, thank you for being here and I will let you gentlemen take it away. Well, hello, Amy. Hello, uh, WRA members and guests. You know, welcome to the Foodie Virtual Hub for March 8th. Uh, thank you for that great introduction, Amy. That was fantastic. Uh, I'm Chef Ryan, a culinary specialist with Cisco of Eastern Wisconsin. And my pal here is Chef Josh from Cisco Baraboo. Josh, say hi, please. How are we doing, guys? I think everybody's doing well. It's a Monday. It's a little bit nicer out. The snow is melting. I think we're getting to the end of winter. We'll see. It's it's Wisconsin. Who knows? We could have a giant blizzard at the end of April. Oh, we and still I'm, got second winter coming up. Oh, There's yeah, no well, question. Yeah. And then probably third winter. <laughs> and I'll go right to summer. <clears throat> All right. Well, at any rate, uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, today, what we're going to talk about is just a few tips and tricks, ways to kind of elevate uh, some things you might do for that big tournament that comes up in March, all that madness that goes on without actually saying those two words together and, you know, violating some sort of copyright thing. Uh, so yeah, we're going to be talking about all that madness that happens in March and, and ways for in-house dining and for to goes uh, that we can kind of elevate a few things. Um, and we're also, you know, speaking of the in-house, we're going to talk about to goes and some different packaging that we have available. And, and that's out there. We're going to talk about some other cool trends too, like uh, plant-based, uh, you know, plant-based uh, proteins and, you know, getting away from gluten pasta and doing some plant-based pasta and things like that. Well, it's not just burgers anymore either, Ryan. It, right. It's kind of something that, that spans across your menu and there's a lot of opportunity for it. And I think more and more people in the industry are asking for it and are looking for, for ways that, you know, you can get away from the black bean burger that kind of everybody else has as, sure. as a vegetarian option. So uh, we're going to dive into that a little bit, you know, not just into, uh, um, you know, the madness of March, if you will. But, uh, you know, we got the Masters coming up. We're going to talk about oh, that. Right. Um, a lot of good sports. Yeah, a lot of good sports. So, um, you know, depending on what uh, is allowed, you know, as far as uh, having shareables and, and, and getting together to watch the game, um, whether that's in-house or to go, we're going to talk about a lot of innovative products today. So if we want to slide on over. Boy, I think we'll start from left to right. Um, so coming into um, March here, a lot of people are looking to, to change up their menus. A lot of people are looking to um, kind of make uh, 
there might even got a little more pop to it, a little more innovation out there. And I think that uh, we've come through with some great products. So um, we have our cutting edge solution line, um, which is really a great opportunity to explore some new flavors and just kind of put uh, modern twists on some classes. So I think we'll start out front here. Um, we do have a elote, which is a grilled street corn uh, crusted shrimp. So it's gonna have that really nice cilantro cheese lime flavor to it. It's gonna to be topped with a uh, smoked paprika crema and a little bit of uh, street corn pico de gallo. So something that goes great in uh, just as an appetizer here, um, also goes well on a street taco, which we have right up front. So um, I know that it gets, for the big game, you're looking for wings. You're looking for something like that with a little bit of heat. And right now as a restaurant owner, that can be hard to come by just because the price of wings, the demand for wings. So we've come up with a few different alternatives, um, some chicken, some pork. So up front here, we have some great rib tips. Uh, it's gonna be done by Austin Blues. It's just gonna be, uh, they can be fried. They can be thrown in a saute pan. They can be even uh, held in a warmer. Just gonna be tossing a little bit of barbecue sauce. Something easy, still handheld. You're still getting that experience um, up front. Another uh, twist on chicken. So this is gonna be a chicken meatball. So instead of getting dirty with your hands and, and uh, you know reaching for that, uh, that cold drink, um, you're gonna want to just grab these with a fork or a, or a skewer. You can also do these on a skewer. I'm um, gonna be tossed with a little bit of barbecue sauce, or I'm sorry, a buffalo sauce, and then top with some blue cheese. So you're still gonna get that dark meat, that nice juicy uh, meat there. You're gonna still have that uh, um, heat from the buffalo as well. So, and then when you talk about innovative, Talking, moving on to our next culinary, or I'm sorry, cutting edge solution item. Um, this is gonna be a battered spicy uh, crinkle cut fry. So this is something that does really well. If you just have your regular run of the mill fry, um, you're gonna have great crunch to it, really nice meaty fry. And um, here's an option that we have from our uh, uh, spies on the fly. So if you're looking for something, instead of just piling it up on the side of a plate, um, this is something that kind of gives that uh, portability, that shareability option to your customers. So we have our new uh, spicy fry. We got a little garlic aioli, we got your standard ketchup, and then we got a whole grain mustard. So kind of anything you can do with that, but just to kind of put a twist on it, kind of up your game if you're looking to upsell something cheap, but also very eye appealing. Now, so, jo <clears throat> now Chef Josh, sorry to interrupt, but when it comes to those fries, those are a coated fry, right? So they're yeah. gonna stay like super crisp, not super only in the window, but also in that to-go box. Absolutely. Yeah, so we're gonna, what did we time that out? Didn't we have that thing in a go box like 45 minutes? Well, 45 and although minutes. it wasn't hot, it was still crispy and delicious. Yeah, you're still going to maintain that crunch. And I think a lot of people have that issue right now, whether you're doing Uber Eats, whether you're uh, doing meals to go. By the time it gets home, you're just not going to maintain that same experience. But with these, you're going to have that option. So to stick with that Spies on the Fly option that we have through Cisco, um, which is a great um, opportunity for restaurant owners to, to kind of change things up when it comes to plateware, when it comes to uh, serviceware. So here's kind of a twist on chicken and waffles. So we've taken a waffle cone, uh, popped it in a little bit of parchment into these cone uh, displays, and then uh, took a buffalo chicken or a, a boneless chicken and tossed it in some Nashville hot seasoning. We got a little bit of our Mike's hot honey. If you're not using it, you probably should be. Another thing available, supplies on the fly, but it's going to be a chili infused honey that go right over the top. If your customer is looking for that sweet heat, which is very trendy right now, very unique, um, really hits on all those aspects. So kind of moving down and we touched a little bit on plant-based as well, um, not just for burgers. So we do have a burger aspect here, um, fresh onion, tomato, fresh greens, a little bit of potato chip on the side. It's a plant-based protein. It's gonna be nice and healthy for you, high in fiber, high in protein for you. Um, but we took that same patty and we actually tossed it a little bit of Italian seasoning and garlic, popped it right onto a pizza with some vegan cheese and our cauliflower crust. Now this is something that's vegetarian, vegan, ready to rock, uh, going right out to your customer and, um, and gluten free. So uh, it's one of those things too that our cauliflower crust, it's an outstanding product. And if you serve it to a customer, they would have no idea that it's cauliflower crust. So we, we encourage you to try that. Um, Plant-based as well, right, right in front here, um, we do have uh, a penne pasta, which we did it in a pasta salad here today, but it is does come fully cooked to you frozen. Drop it right in some water, it's ready to go, whether it be a pasta salad or a hot dish, 
but just another option when it comes to a gluten-free, eats really well for, for a gluten-free pasta. So all the colors and all the flavors that you see here um, coming right to you, whether you're sit down or carry out. So when we talk about carry out, we'll head over to Chef Ryan. Well, before we get to carry out though, um, when we're talking about that plant-based burger, we can take that and twist into something else, can't Absolutely. we? Absolutely. Like yep. taking it, perhaps making a meatloaf or something like that? Yep. Awesome. You know, we'll touch on that just a bit. All right, bit. sounds How's good. That? Yeah, there's so much you can do with that plant-based burger and plant-based patty to really kind of hit any aspect that your customer might be looking for, uh, whether it's that kind of main focus protein or just even an ancillary ingredient. There's a lot of great things you can do with plant-based uh, burgers. Uh, so, you know, like Chef Josh was saying, you know, a big part of the equation is also stepping up our game on how we do our to-goes. And we've got so many creative options out there nowadays. Instead of just that kind of old school styrofoam container, which we all, you know, it's definitely the most cost-effective way to do things, but, you know, it's kind of not the most environmentally responsible one. And perception is a big part of the game now. You know, when our customers, we, did, we had that big stretch of not being able to have indoor dining. Now we have it. We've got a good mix of indoor and carry out, but just still focused on that carry out. You want something that's going to kind of frame your food. Uh, you want something that's going to leave an environmental impact that your customers are going to appreciate. And we want something that's going to hold your food the best that it can, you know, all the way from final production to, you know, being bagged up and sent out with either that third party delivery system or a customer coming to pick it up, or if you do your own delivery. We've got a ton of really kind of cool options out there, both things that would be stocked at um, Cisco and then also through supplies on the fly, which is Josh had mentioned before, our supply and equipment end of it, through a company called Restaurantware, uh, which does some really interesting packaging and really interesting ways to do uh, caterings and everything like that. So I encourage you, if you ever get to a point that we're going back to catering and you need to look for those really kind of cool, fun dishes, check on supplies on the fly because there's a lot of neat stuff from restaurant wear. So we're just kind of looking in the front here, ways we package things up is, you know, looking at, you know, a three compartment container. So we can kind of keep things separately. So we've got a good mix of chips and some bread crisps here with an awesome uh, pimento cheese and then some fresh vegetables, but we've kept them all separate. So the flavors aren't going to mingle and they're not going to get soggy. We're going to keep our crispy crispy and we're going to keep our things that are a little bit softer soft. One thing to point out too, if you've never really uh, known or noticed, uh, when you're looking at to-go containers, there's these little vent holes in the top. And those come in handy, especially when it comes to fried food. If we put fried food in a container, especially in one of those styros that doesn't have a vent hole, all that steam is gonna rise up, hit the top of it and turn into rain essentially and come back down and get that food soggy. So having a container that's got those little vent holes, let it steam out a little bit, is gonna help really one, keep your food more crispy, keep it uh, in better condition and kind of really elevate how you're doing your carry out. Um, another way too, you know, even if we go to a different style, so this is, you know, an earth friendly plastic one. We've also got, you know, the, the paper ones too that have several compartments. So here we got a simple non with a great uh, a dip that's made from uh, burnt ends. Um, we've got, uh, a mineral filled polypropylene container, which is way over there and I can't grab it, uh, but that's a little bit sturdier. That's a plasticky kind of one, uh, but that's also going to be, you know, biodegradable and earth friendly and everything like that. But so once we've figured out like what the best packaging for things are, we want to look at the best way to secure it. And I'm looking for it here. So we've all heard those stories of you send your food out with a third party delivery company and the driver's dipping in the bag and eating the fries, or somehow the food's not getting there to the quality that you sent it out with. Well, one way to ensure doing that is uh, these awesome tamper evidence stickers. Uh, so when you're packaging your stuff up, just grab one, close your container up, and slap that sticker on there so you have the peace of mind and your customer has the peace of mind that the product that you're putting out there is the exact same one that's getting to their home the exact way you wanted it presented. So now you're gonna know if somebody's opened that container. Another thing you can do is when you're bagging things up, so you might have a really great logoed bag like this or something, think about doing a tamper evident bag. 
So they come in completely clear. Now here's the bonus of this. So not only is your customer gonna be able to see every product in there, you're gonna be able to see it too. So you're not gonna have that issue where like customer calls back, I didn't get my soup, I didn't get my side salad. You're gonna be able to tell in the bag before it goes out with the driver or with the customer that everything is there. What's cool about this too is it's also got a safety seal. So I actually accidentally sealed this one up already, otherwise I'd show you how it worked. But it's basically got a little piece of tape in there. You, you unzip it, seal the whole thing up, and then you've got a completely sealed bag right there that you can see all of your food in. And uh, once you rip it open, you're not putting it back together. So your customer knows that once they get that and it's sealed, that nobody has touched this bag since it left the restaurant for food safety. All right. I'm going to stop you there. Yeah. Take that, bring that bag on back. How important is that in the uh, to-go industry nowadays? I mean, this is something that everybody's doing to-go. Everybody's doing carryout. How, just how important it is for the end user to get it as they would in the restaurant. Well, and that's, that's a big part of it. You know, we're actually charging a little bit more most of the time for our carryouts than we are what people are eating in our restaurants. And in our restaurants, you know, we are you know, using our plates to frame that food beautifully and to really make it look spectacular. So by putting our stuff in proper containers, we're actually able to kind of offer that same look almost that we would in our restaurants. So spending that few extra cents uh, on a really nice container, some nice packaging will help that customer feel the value perception just like they would um, in your own restaurant when they see it plated. Uh, one last thing I want to mention, since we're kind of on the topic of paper and disposable things, you know, straws. We've all heard how bad straws are for the environment, plastic straws, but we all know how bad paper straws are in a cocktail or any other soda or anything like that. We've got a great new solution for that. And it's actually an agave straw. So if you look at it and see, it acts like a plastic straw. You put this in a drink for, I don't know, overnight we tried it. And it's not going to get soggy like a paper straw would, but it will compost and it will biodegrade. So the impact on the environment is, is drastically quite low. Uh, so it's a really quality top-notch straw that you might be able to put into a craft cocktail that I'm going to talk to, that Josh is going to talk to you about using some ways to either offer non-alcoholic upcharges on your sodas or even into your craft cocktails as well. So Chef Josh. Here's that straw that Ryan was talking about. And actually, we did this last night. And um, we popped it into one of our uh, new innovative bags as well. Um, so this is something that you would find if you're looking for um, drinks to go. If you're looking to up that uh, uh, check average, whether that be with some of our great uh, sparkling sodas from European Imports, which is also a, a Cisco branded company that does a lot of different upscale when it comes to ginger beer, when it comes to sarsaparilla, root beer, any kind of flavored sodas. A little something that um, great for the patio, especially with the spring coming up, summertime, pop this, serve it for a table for two or three. But um, if they're looking for it to go, something a little more portability, these bags, you just open them right up, pour your, your pre-mixed drink right in there. And then uh, actually a straw goes right into this hole, ready to rock. So if you're at a concert, if you're, you know, you're outside and you can't have glass, Great opportunity for that. And like I said, we put this in there last week, still hard. So if you're running into paper straws and whatnot like that in the industry and you're thinking about making that switch, this agave option is fantastic. So when we think about our spring menus and kind of upping your game with that as well, I'm going to touch back to a little bit of food. So um, we have our fries. If you're looking for something that's a little bit different, a great way to build your check average and at low cost, to the restaurant owner would be a dip option. And we got a couple right up front. And I, I know I had mentioned the masters were coming up for all you golf enthusiasts out there. That's their number one sandwich out there is just a, a plain white bread with pimento cheese on it. Cold, ready to go. They sell thousands of them. So what we have up here is a pimento cheese spread. We got some great uh, Parmesan Romano uh, crisps also available at European Imports. And um, something that's cold, but really easy, low cost to the restaurant owner, but really nice, presents that flavor and kind of uniqueness, especially for this time of year. And then out front, what uh, Ryan had in the to-go box there, we got some of our mini naan with our burnt end ends dip, which actually has chopped up pieces of burnt ends. It's kind of a barbecue flavor. I'm gonna hit on that trend as well. So, and when we're going into 
you know, we're, I guess we're getting out of the cool um, winter, but getting into spring a little bit, but home style favorites are, are still very much on trend. And I think we're going to go back to that plant based a little bit here um, by using that same uh, blend that we had for plant based protein, but actually doing it in a meatloaf. So Ryan has created this morning um, a little bit of uh, some oven roasted potatoes underneath, and then we stuffed it with some, uh, I believe, a vegan cheese. Yeah, uh, yep. I stuffed with a vegan mozzarella and sauteed mushrooms with a little bit of garlic and shallots. Yeah, so I mean, that binder that goes into that meat that's already in there, um, you don't need to add the breadcrumbs, you don't need to add the egg, anything like that to kind of worry about consistency of the meatloaf. That's ready to go. So we pounded that thin, rolled it up with the stuffing, and, and baked it and, and sliced it ready to rock. So great opportunity not only to, to feature the plant based, but when you think about to-go meal kits, this is something that's going to reheat really well for the end user as well. So we chopped it up here as well and just threw it in a taco, but just a lot of different opportunities. And I think that restaurant owners don't need to be necessarily so afraid of the plant based anymore. And um, if you're concerned about that, if you're um, don't have as big of a demographic, I'd say try it in a LTO, a limited, a limited time offering, because I think that drives business really well. And I think that um, it's something that you can try out, see what your customers like, engage them a little bit. And if it's something that really takes off, then you can talk about putting it on the menu. And um, I think that that's a great way right now for, for customers to kind of figure out their clientele and figure out what works. And um, speaking of menus, speaking of limited time offerings, This is kind of what we were talking about with that. So these are some great uh, menu services. We call them sluggers, I guess, but uh, really just inserts um, that are done through our Cisco studio. Um, any kind of customer with Cisco, this is an option for them to kind of set something up like this, a template. And um, it's also free to them. So it's something that, you know, you touch base on appetizer, entree, dessert, kind of a feature for that. Um, you get your logo up there. Um, just something else that uh, is an uh, opportunity for you, something to talk about, right? Yeah, well, you know, kind of talking about those menu services and things, you know, Restaurant Rising is a great program that we have at Cisco, but it's a good, great way for you to get out there with some things like limited time offers, with some of the things that our third party partners have, like a pop menu to help redesign your menu, or uh, order ease that helps control a lot of the things in the back or even uh, you know, the discounts you can get through Uber Eats and everything. But one of the cool things that's available too is even you know, some menu design work. So getting you know, your menu modernized a little bit. You know, so going with like a tabloid style and really focusing you know, on those items and things. So this is a, a menu that um, Marketing Services did for one of our good customers. And they've had a lot of fantastic success with it. Uh, Josh, where can they find out more about uh, Restaurant Fresh Rising? That would be at rising.cisco.com. And it's going to kind of highlight and feature everything that uh, we're doing to uh, do our part to help these uh, customers and uh, restaurants out there to kind of meet them halfway. And, um, you know, we know that some some are struggling and there's opportunity there that Cisco is going to work with you and, and offer some great resources. So, Awesome. Is there anything else you want to bring up? I mean... Uh... There's so much that we could talk about, but we don't we, sure. we don't have all afternoon. Everybody's got to get their prep list done, get the mise en place <laughs> on the line. Yeah, um, I think we should talk about you know maybe just mention social media. Okay, like, it's out there. Absolutely, and it's a big it's a big thing. You know, yeah. so in tandem with your website and, and your great presence there, obviously having Facebook and, and Twitter and Instagram, uh, you know, those are really key things to have as well to get your message out there. Yeah, and and. You can never overdo on that stuff. You know, sometimes you hear people that say, boy, they're always posting, they're always posting. But those people, it gets to a point where they almost have to open their eyes to it because the people that are always posting, they're always going to be talked about, whether it's good or bad. And, you know, some restaurants say there can never be bad publicity. So it's kind of something that constantly posting your menus, constantly posting pictures of your food, encourage your customers to use your QR codes, um, encourage your customers to post pictures and, and the experiences that they had there because, all of that is just word of mouth right now that, you know, people are starting to get back to the norm. And I think that that's important for uh, them to know exactly what's going on. So. Well, I think that is a great way to, to look at it. Um, before we uh, turn it over to Q&A, yep. there's always dessert at the end of the meal. I suppose that there is. So what are these two great options that we have? I know, you know one of them is plant-based and awesome. 
completely animal product free um, vegan. Yep. How would you talk about Gia, that? Yeah, I'm not talking about this one. I'm putting it up here. <laughs> so uh, plant based, no animal products in here at all. All plants, uh, vegan vanilla cheesecake, New York style. Uh, comes in frozen, so all I'm going to do is thaw and serve. Got a wonderful little crust on there. And then uh, what we did is we just took some tart cherries, a little bit of uh, sugar, cooked it all down, and, and did it right onto the uh, cheesecake. So again, if you wanted to have that offering um, of a vegan dessert, it's available now, and you don't have to worry about bacon anything. So, but if you don't want that plant-based and or the vegan options, we got something that's a little more indulgent for you. So we took a really rich uh, brownie underneath. We got a graham cracker crust, and it does come uh, frozen, ready to rock to you. You just thaw it out, have a little fun with your staff. I mean, blow torching is always a problem. Yeah, whether that's at the table or in the back, you just torch that mallow. And all of a sudden, we're right around a campfire. So, well, you might want to make sure we don't burn the building. Yeah, down. okay. <laughs> Everybody, you always have that friend that likes it a little charred. So. Right. Well, um, that's kind of all we have for you. So, we'll open it up to a QA. I'm going to pop my earbud in so I can hear if we got any questions and kind of go from there. Thank you, Josh and Ryan, so much. I know everybody appreciates it. Um, so everybody feel free to continue to put your questions. I'm using the chat feature at the bottom of your screen. For those that aren't familiar, it looks like a little like cartoon bubble. So one question here is, should we offer specials at a discount to get people in the door? Well, I think, you know, Sorry, I'm gonna take this out. In my in my opinion, not at this time. You know, it's so lean right now as it is. You know, still combating with COVID and still having to do a lot of carry out and everything that you really need to capitalize on every dollar you're bringing in. So instead of discounting something, I would look at adding something new, something like a limited time offer, like Chef Josh was saying. You know, something that you can put out on social media that draws people in, whether it's a, a new steak or whether it's a new other you know seafood protein or something and price it competitively that, you know, you're going to make some money on it because, you know, now's really not the time to be doing discounts because every dollar that a restaurant can bring in is very important right now. Thank you. What uh, type of appetizers are the best for to go? Well, we are working uh, diligently to uh, kind of put some fried appetizers that are great to go um, that are going to have some more holding uh, property. But I think that there's a lot of people out there that want a non-fried appetizer, which is why we kind of focused a little bit on dips today. They can offer, you know, great flavor, uh, low cost to the to the restaurant owner, um, but just kind of different and innovative, whether you do a non, whether you do a chip with it, something like that. But we get a lot of uh, questions and comments about a non-fried appetizer. So I'd stick to dips. I'd stick to um, maybe a chicken skewer, um, you know, stuff like that. When you think about it, kind of think of how it's going to travel for the end user. So when especially coming into spring and summer now, when we're going to have all those great tomatoes coming up, stuff mm -hmm. like that, you know, think about, you know, even something as simple as a caprese, mm -hmm. you know, some great stuff out there. Yep. More questions here. And um, somebody's asking, um, what is the ordering number for a twisted stick? Ah, the SUPC for the cheese stick that you used. Oh, uh, I could certainly follow up with that. <laughs> I yeah. was going to say, uh, if you could rattle that off like a checker, I was going to be pretty <laughs> impressed. <laughs> yeah, we can Sorry. follow up. We can follow up with that in our follow up email. Sure. Wonderful. Okay. Um, another question. What is the best French fry to bake with? Boy, there's a lot of different options. Um, you know, that's certainly something you talk with your uh, uh, sales consultant about, but uh, right on the information that you'd be looking at uh, on our website, it will say underneath that there will be ovenable or bakeable. Um, generally a coated fry or something like that, yeah. would you say, Ryan? Coated fry is going to work the best. So whether it's a, like a phantom fry, which is going to have um, a batter on it made from like rice and potato starch and everything, or even something like our ultimate crisp, which is going to have more of a flour based batter to it. That's going to oven the best. It's going to stay crispy. When you do an uncoated fry, it might get crispy, but you're never going to get the, the color that you need uh, when it's ovenable or when you're trying to do it in the oven, whether it be in something like a Turbo Chef or a Mary Chef to a conveyor oven or even a convection oven. 
But speaking on these uh, these uh, fries that we showed today, these are ovenable yeah. and, and ready to rock. And they actually brought out that spice even a little bit more when we did them in the oven. So. Okay. Uh, another question for to-go businesses. Um, what do you recommend offering a full or a limited menu, generally speaking? I, you know, I would say more limited. You know, you need to be able to control what you can control. So doing a limited menu allows you to control the narrative on the food that's going out. Um, so doing a limited menu with to goes, you're going to put out the product that you know is going to travel the best, it's going to look the best, and you're going to make the most money on keep those other items as an incentive for people to come into your restaurant. Now that we have more and more indoor dining, now we're gonna have patios open. Having a limited menu for to-go is a good thing. Having a larger menu for in-house is an incentive for them to come in um, on those nights when perhaps they have a babysitter or something like that. Get them back into the restaurant uh, with you know some of those signature items that one, maybe don't travel well in to-go, but you know that you can make money on in the restaurant. Hey, thank you. We'll take a couple more questions. Um, what shredded cheese would you give the best um, pull on pizza? I'll check that one. Out. <laughs> uh, go ahead. Well, it kind of depends on what what type of oven you have. So whether you have um, a deck oven or if you've got something that's got heat from the top, like an impinger oven. Um, how your cheese is going to react depends on what type of oven you have, whether you're going to use a completely 100% low moisture part skim, or if you're going to use a completely 100% whole milk mozzarella. Uh, it depends on that, where that heat source is and how it's working. Uh, I would say like, in, in my opinion, I love the stretch on a whole milk mozz, uh, but sometimes you want to have a little bit of a blend in there. So you can look at a blend that's got low moisture part skim and whole milk mozz, almost like a New York style 50, 50 blend, or you could look at um, a blend like, like one we have in our Aritzia line, which is uh, low moisture part skim, uh, whole milk mozzarella, uh, and then provolone along with um, Romano and Parmesan. So it adds a little salty flavor in the background, but you still get the stretch from it. So how your cheese is gonna act kind of depends on what oven you have. And um, again, what your kind of personal preference is too is, is how oily it gets. But I love the stretch in a whole milk mozzarella. Thank you both so much. Oh, it looks like we have that uh, code. Um, so for those that were asking about that, I'm gonna rattle it off here. 142-9881, 142-9881. Lisa just provided that for us. <laughs> Well, we are just past the half hour mark. I wanted to thank uh, Chef Josh and Chef Ryan again um, for leading this session today. Thank you, Cisco, for uh, providing this session uh, as part of uh, their sponsorship. So thank you again, and we look forward to reconvening um, on April 12th, also Monday at 2 p.m. Wonderful, really looking awesome. forward to it. And like to see everybody again. Yep, thanks guys. Thank you, everybody. Have a great afternoon. Enjoy the sun. Bye-bye.